hate factoring, right? Especially when we got to factoring these, right? Oh, it's plus seven? OK. Some of you guys hated factoring when it came up to this. Because you hated doing, oh, A times C, right? And then you had to do factor by grouping. And it just became like, ah, oh, it's such a long process, and I really don't like doing it. Well, remember, we can always complete the square. If it's factorable or if it's non factorable, we can always complete the square. However, if we have an A that's greater than 1 when completing the square, we do have to change the process a little bit. I wouldn't say it's as much different, though, as changing the process when we were factoring. So the first thing, though, we always want to make sure when trying to um, complete the square or solve by completing the square is we need to make sure that we have our equation in quadratic, is a quadratic equation, which in this case we do. We have an A, we have a B, and we have a C. So we're good. We can complete the square. Now remember, completing the square is all about creating a perfect square trinomial, right? Because once we can create a perfect square trinomial, we can rewrite that as a binomial squared where we can take the square root on both sides. So first of all, I need to create a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to do that on the left side. Um, well, anyways, sorry. First of all, before I even do that, I always want to actually, yes, let's get this onto the other side. Because there's another way of teaching it, but I don't really like teaching it that way. So OK. So now we have our tri or we have our quadratic and linear term on the left side, and we have our constant on the right side. Now remember, I said I want to create a perfect square trinomial. The best thing I always like to do first is see if you can factor out. Because when you have a greater than 1, a lot of times you can factor out a number, right? But in this case, can we fact actually, sorry, we need to factor out a number. Sorry, my mistake. You cannot complete the square when a is greater than 1. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to factor out that 2. Now this becomes a little bit difficult because that 7, yeah, you can't factor 2 out of 7. So when you factor it out, it's going to look like this. Now, did I do everything mathematically correct? Does 2 times x squared give you 2x squared? Yes. Does 2 times 7 halves give you 7 x? Or 2 times 7 halves x give you 7 x? Yes. Okay. So remember, when we factor out, that usually we talk about factoring things out evenly. You can still factor things out unevenly to provide you with fractions. All right. So now, here's, here's what we have, but we need to complete the square, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take b divided by 2 and square it. So I have 7 halves divided by 2 squared. 7 halves divided by 2. What do you do there? So you have 7 divided by 2 and then divided by 2. So remember, when you have a fraction over a fraction, you got to get rid of your bottom fraction. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. 2 times your reciprocal multiplies out to 1. 7 halves times 1 half equals 7 fourths. So really, this is 7 fourths squared, which equals 49 over 16. You just multiply by the reciprocal as your denominator. 1 half, and then multiply 1 half on top. Oh, OK. Got it? All right. So now I have, I have 49 over 16, OK? Now let's take a look at this one. So I have 49 over 16. So therefore, that's going to create my perfect square. Plus 49 over 16. Now remember, whatever we did on the left side, we always had to do on the right side, right? So we do um, 4 plus 49 over 16. However, ladies and gentlemen, let's look on this left side. Am I really adding a 49 plus 16? Is it really a 49 over 16? If you were to kind of think of the weight of this, is this really 49 over 16? Or is it being multiplied by a value? It's being multiplied by a value, isn't it? Right? So, yeah, this 49 over 16 is being multiplied by 2. So since it's being multiplied by 2 over this side, Noah, then we need to make sure we multiply this side by 2.
Do you understand, do you understand how you add and subtract on the same side? If you add here, you have to make sure you add here. But this, this 49 over 16 is being multiplied by 2. So you have to multiply this one by 2. Otherwise, they're not even, right? So now, let's create. So now, let's go and create our perfect square trinomial. We'll get to adding our fractions here. So here, we take our b over 2. So we're going to have 2 times um, x plus 7 over 4 squared. And then equals, so we're going to have 4 plus, uh, let's see here, we're going to have 96 over 32. Right? So now let's do a little side math. 4 plus 96 over 32. Get them to be the same denominators. So we're going to have 128. So 128 plus 96. What? <laughs> huh? 98. Oh, it's 98. You're right. Thank you. So I have 226, right, over 32. Um, so I have 2 times x plus 7 4 squared equals um, two hundred twenty six divided by 32, right? Then we have to divide by 2 on both sides because you've got to solve for x. It's always been squared. So now, Justin, so now, once you combine this, you divide by 2 on both sides. Dividing by 2 is going to make that 64. Then we take the square root. So therefore, you'll have, I'm just going to kind of move up here. So I'll have x plus 7 divided by 4 equals the square root of, or plus or minus, the square root of 226 over, uh, over 8, then subtract 7 fourths. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and double that. So you could have this as going to be um, 14 plus or minus the square root of 226 minus. divided by 8. All right? Minus. Yes, minus. Thank you. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, lengthy one. Hold on, hold on. I have way too many kind people taking up. What's your question? Guys, guys, listen up, please. Yes. Yep, and that gave me 64. And I can take the square root of 64, which was 8. Because these are not like denominators. So to get them to be like denominators, I had to multiply by 2 over 2. Yes? Question? No? Justin, didn't I ask you already something? Please, yes. Here? Remember, we did b divided by 2, which provided me with 49 over 16. So then I rewrote that as my perfect square. That's like uh, the question, remember we did the finding the c value? You find the value of c, then you create your perfect square. Yes? You're factoring ones that you'll be able to factor. Most of completing the squares, you won't be able to factor. Okay. I mean, as far as like on a test and stuff like that. Sure. 